please have your seat. Ambassadors. Ambassadors. The, 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 the ink in for Christ is too low. Can you amplify your volume? Ambassadors. Yes. Either burden or no burden, Jesus is still alive. No matter where you worship him, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's unchangeable God. Give him the clap offering. Give him the clap offering. Hallelujah. Sometimes you need certain places to, to, to give you another level in faith. You know, there are certain times you've been in indoors for so much, so many days, so many years. And at times your voice must be heard by those who doesn't come there. So no matter where you are sitting, somebody's hearing you. Say, I'm into that. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is another semester. The semester with a strike. Okay. Are you with me? Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you, you can't you can't run unless you, you bow. Praise the Lord. God, God is going to take you to another high height. So, so being in quiet position doesn't mean that God is not speaking. If your, your father wants to speak, you must shut up. And God is about to speak to you. That's why you're in the lower position. You are here and your masters are not in the doors. To give you what the reason why you are here. And God has given you this opportunity time to have something, a relationship with him. Therefore, enjoying whatever is happening and give time to the almighty God because whatever he has decided to do in your life it shall come to pass. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. This morning, when I was praying yesterday and I wanted to speak to you, I was thinking about the theme. But God spoke to me that I should come with you at this time to preach or talk about walking in the spirit of God as a Christian. Walking in the spirit of God as a Christian. You know, once you are a Christian, you are in another area of this world. When we talk about walking in spirit as a Christian, what we are trying to say is that you may live in this world, but you are in another realm. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. But I say, walk by the Spirit, not walk by the Spirit, and you will not gravit gravitate by the desire of flesh. For desire of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desire of the Spirit against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing what you want. Galatians chapter 5, 16 and 17. You know, you, you don't have to be somebody who give glory to the flesh. As a Christian in this campus, God wants you to walk in the spirit. So that you not give the, the attitude, the, the, the graffiti to the flesh. But you give the everything you have to God by walking in spirit. When we say we are walking in spirit, it doesn't mean that we are just spiritual or we are just people without legs. But we are the same person. I'm the same as Jenny Martin. You are the same Mary. But you are living in the principle of Jesus Christ. That is walking in the spirit. Hallelujah. Because the God we are serving, we cannot see him with our naked eye. But our senses and our abilities prove that there is somebody called God. And that God lives within us. Therefore, if we walk according to the way he wants us to walk, then we are living in the spirit. So God says, I should tell you this morning, that no matter how you see things, no matter how things are going, no matter how people are doing their things yet, one thing you have to do is to walk in the spirit. Praise the Lord. So that you don't give the flesh the strength to control you. 
but you give the spirit the ability to take your life to where God wants it to be. Amen. So you don't have to walk in the flesh. When you talk about walking in the flesh, it's thinking about everything in the flesh. Doing things like everybody does. Trying to be like everybody. When we walk in the flesh, we think about things that can help our physical growth. When we walk about the flesh, we are doing all sorts of things that will make us happy as we are living on this earth. But when we walk in the spirit, the one thing that we can use to defy is walking according to the will of Christ. Praise the Lord. So being in this area, being in this school, God is telling you that this semester, don't be like a flesh person, but be like somebody who has the spiritual ability to do things that God himself wants us to do. Amen. Amen. How can we walk in the spirit? We are living on this earth with everybody. We don't use spiritual chalk. We don't use spiritual ink. We don't use spiritual shoes. Everything that is going on on this earth is physical. They are flesh. They are made by men and women. By how can we walk in the spirit as a Christian? Number one, the first point, number one. Surrender the control of your life to the Holy Spirit. If you want to live or walk in the spirit, you need to surrender the control of your life to the Holy Spirit. In other words, you don't have to control your affairs again. But you should allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in everything. You don't have the ability to control yourself. But you give the ability and the power to the Holy Spirit to lead you to wherever he wants you to be. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 to 16. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 to 16. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. A son by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself hears, be a witness with us, with our spirit, that we are the children of God. You know what the Romans is trying to tell us that we have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. Because the Bible says those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. So if we are walking in the Spirit, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to be our leader. But let me tell you, the Holy Spirit cannot lead you unless you have the Holy Spirit in your life. The Holy Spirit will not lead you unless you believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not lead you unless you rely on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not lead you unless you give him the chance to control your life. This morning, God wants you to be somebody who always focus into the spiritual realm. That is the spiritual leadership of the Holy Spirit will take control over your life and your body. Say amen to that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in this sense, whatever you do, try to do it according to the will of God. Praise God. Give the Holy Spirit a total control. Surrender everything. So if possible, you don't move unless God asks you to move. You don't do anything unless you have been given that mandate of God to do things. Therefore, people of God, don't focus your attention over what you can do, but focus your attention on how God wants you to do it. Praise the Lord. So give the total surrender. So your body doesn't belong to you again. Everything you do doesn't belong to you. You don't control anything. It is like a car. The engine is there. The steer is there. But somebody control the steer. For the ties to go where the car should go. So you is a car. And the Holy Spirit is the driver. He must drive you to where God wants you to go. So believers 
let us begin to think about what God wants us to do. The point number two. Demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit. Demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit. If you are walking in Spirit, number two is try to demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit. Why? Because if you don't have the fruit of the Spirit, you can't walk in the Spirit. When you read from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, he mentioned all of them. If you don't have the fruit of the Spirit, it is impossible for you to walk in the Spirit. And what does it say? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. You know, there are certain things that have been articulated in that verse that when we begin to do them, it is a proof that we have the fruit of the Spirit in us. And when we begin to demonstrate that thing to the people of this world, to ourselves, we begin to know that we are not working according to what our mind tells us. But we are caught, we are working according to how God wants us to work. And that is the direction of the Holy Spirit. And this one draw your attention all the time to the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So don't just walk as any ordinary person. You are not an ordinary person. You are somebody. You are somebody who was created by God. You are somebody who has been called by God. And you are somebody whom God has given his own spirit in you. Therefore, you are not just anybody. But you are a body of Christ. Praise God. And you are somebody who God has used you as a storage of his fruits. So, my body is the storage of God's fruits. My body is the storage of the spirit of God, his fruits. Therefore, I have to bring out the fruit of God in me for other people to know that I am bearing the name of Christ in my life. And therefore, if I begin to prove that I am the storage of the fruit of God, then the spirit of the living God dwells in me. Because it's the Holy Spirit that bear that fruit. So if I have that Holy Spirit in me, the fruit that will come out from me will be the one that has been bear by the Holy Spirit. Give God a clap of fruit to that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. A Christian must walk in the Spirit. The third point, conform to the image of Christ. Conform to the image of Christ. Romans 12 verse 2. Romans 12 verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what cause will is his good, pleasing and perfect will. Hallelujah. You don't have to be somebody that we measure you with the things of this flesh. We don't have to become somebody whom, whom we see the images of uh, 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 this man. Uh, uh, who, which one can I say? Michael Jackson. Oh, you know, I, I look, I want to be like Michael Jackson. You know, yeah, I want to be like Kabra Kabra. You know, I want to be like Amachi Dede. I said, Christian Lewin. Ajaku. Are you correct? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, I went to a place that I was preaching about the reason why you are in that position. And, and I was preaching about somebody who has just concluded or finished the, the SHS. What do you call it? Second risk. That our time it was called second risk. And I don't know what you call it in your time. And uh, I was thinking about after secondary school, all you can do is to fly a, a, a yam on the roadside and, and sell them. So what was the need of you to go to secondary school? Somebody does it. 
without even going to school. You are just wasting the resources that was put in you. Are you with me? After secondary school, that is what you can do. Then what was the sense of you going to secondary school for your mother and your parents to waste that money? Even your school fees alone, from form one to form three, the school fees, your boarding fee, what they spend on you. Five years of that flying on that roadside, the prophet cannot cover it. Are you with me? So being a Christian, if you still want to become like a Machi Dede, are you there? Are you here? Correct? <laughs> Becoming a Christian in university level, you still want to be like a Jacko, no matter what he has. I tell you, what you are learning is better than what he has over there. One time, one of my in-laws was going to university and uh, a man came to me, and that's I've given him to him to work with. And they were selling cements. And when the result came in, it was very nice. So the guy wanted to go to university and uh, that man came to me and said, Sofo, can you sit down with me and we sign agreement that I want your, your boy to work with me and I'll buy him a house and give him a car. And I say, is that all? So yes, and I'll give him good pay. So thank you very much. But let me tell you, if the guy concentrates much, he can also become like you. Instead of you giving him that car, he can also give somebody that car. So allow the person to do what he wants to do. Let him go on and study. Let him tell you, when the guy was in the university, at the, at the studying level as you are doing now, he got a contract with a white to do his P8. Immediately he finished the whatever level, 200 or level 500 you are talking of. <laughs> Immediately he finished it, he got a contract to do the P8 and they were sponsoring him and through that sponsorship, he was able to buy the twice of that house that that man wanted to give him. Are you with me? You don't have to conform to any images. You have only one image, that is Christ. The ultimate. Don't think that you have to be like me. I am one Ejenim Watin. Any Ejenim Watin is fortune. Okay. I am the only original. Are you with me? So, the reason is that I am conforming to the image of the omnipotent and omnipresence the Christ and this is where God wants you to be if you are really a Christian and you want to walk in their spirit don't compare yourself to anybody at Christ praise the Lord stretch yourself because Jesus said if, if you believe in me whatever I'm doing you can do and do even greater things than that even Jesus wants you to be higher than him According to law Christology. When you go to higher Christology, you can't compare yourself to Christ. But when you come to law Christology, that is where Jesus became a man. And that is what he said. If you believe in me, whatever I do, you can do and do greater things than that. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why Jesus did not preach on television, but I'm preaching on television. Amen. Are you with me? Hello? Are you hearing me? So... The third point that God wants you to think about is just focus on Christ. Let him be somebody you can just search for. Not the people around you. Not your regular. Not your, your minister. Not anybody. But Jesus himself. Because he is the one that our goal and our finisher. He is the one we are just certain to become like. And that will prove that we are walking in spirit not in flesh. We think about small, small things. What we finish tomorrow, what we end next week. That is all we think about. But if our attention focus on Christ, I tell you, we will get wherever God wants us to be. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The fourth point is living a continual praying life. If you want to walk in spirit, the 
fourth point is living a continuum praying life. Jesus said this in Luke 18, 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray not, not give up. And Paul also said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, pray continually. He who pray continually walk in the spirit. If you want to walk in spirit, let prayer be one of your things that you will never stop doing. Hallelujah. You know, prayer is very difficult. My second book will be out maybe before December. And it's about prayer. Prayer is a communication between man and God. Prayer is a visa to where your properties are. Therefore, if you are so living in continual praying life, I tell you, nothing, nothing can hide from your face. Because the moment you pray, you have given a work to God to do. Immediately you open your mouth to ask him, you are telling him to give you the answer. And he said, pray or call unto me and I will answer you according to Jeremiah 33. And show you the secret thing that you do not know. Therefore, at the moment you pray, you are talking to God. When you call somebody on phone and you are speaking to that person, it means you have given that person something to do. So the person must talk. So prayer brings you closer to God all the time. And God also focuses his attention on you. Because you are calling him. Amen. Listen to this place. You know, when you were young, at times two, three years, your parents may say, Did you hear that? Do you hear some of your children, of your friends, your, 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 your younger sisters and brothers, that your mother complained, this child cried too much. Do you know that? I have one in my house. My third born. She's a girl. And you, 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 you can't forget her. It is impossible that you can forget Susan because five minutes she will cry. <laughs> so if you see, you, you don't hear the cry, you, you begin to search for her. Where is she? <laughs> five minutes. And because she always cries, whatever she requests or asks for, she gets it. Simply because I don't want her to cry. Therefore, immediately he starts her spirit. Don't leave out prayer. Whenever you are walking, try as much as you can to pray. I quite remember I was in the UK one time and uh, I was leading a team to a mission in Italy. And when we were going, we flew to uh, the northern part of Italy and we had a service day and we were going to the north. We, we, we landed south and then we're going to the north. So we were driving 12 hours. So two cars came and picked us. We were about 10. We divided ourselves into two. And I told them that you talk 20 minutes, you pray 40 minutes within the hour. No. Are you with me? You talk 20 minutes and you pray 40 minutes within the hour around us but we were talking about our expectations in that program we are talking about how God will use us we are talking about the spiritual things and after that 12 hours journey we were having a program in one of the Catholic churches in Rome then because of our preparation in prayer the people who were coming to the program they didn't know the sort of people who were coming because they thought when people are coming from Britain, they are just coming as people of Britain. And they are just coming as coming. <laughs> and the program, nobody knows the reason they brought a blind and the mental disorder person into that program. And because of our preparation in the car, 
Immediately I spoke about 30 minutes. Over there, we don't preach too long as I'm preaching here. They give you 13 minutes to preach, and it should be 13, not 15. And you, you manage yourself, they, or 10. They will say, okay, 11 minutes. At most, 13. And after preaching that short sermon, and when we began to pray, nobody called that blind to come forward for us to pray for her. And she sat down there, began to see. She started seeing things. The eye was just open. And, and that mental, mental disorder person, a woman who was from psychiatric hospital, at that moment, the prayer we pray in the car, heal her before we ended that program. Let me tell you this. When you are working in spirit, don't forget praying life. It is about time for you to let prayer be the priority in your life. The first thing you have to do, Jesus was the most example. That's why the Bible says we should not confirm into this world, but into things of Christ. Because early in the morning, you see Jesus at the bush praying. Early, dawn, before the churches, the school arise and ring the bell or whatever, your alarm will ring and call you to let us Jesus will be at the bush praying. The reason is that he was walking in spirit. In this campus, you need to walk in spirit. In this campus, this semester, you see the beginning of the semester. If you don't pray, you will not see the end of it. The reason is that the beginning is Christ and the end will be closing. But when you pray, you can turn the beginning and the end. And before I finish my message, there is something I'm sharing with the Methodists and it's very important. Let me give you just five minutes about that. I'm trying to gather some things and bring them together concerning the differences between Methodism and Wesleyan zeal. The difference between Methodism and John Wesleyan zeal. You know, John Wesley was a member and a minister of which church? No, 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 was 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 the Church of England. That is Anglican. And he saw what is happening in our church now. Am I making sense? He saw what is happening in our church. And he brought a revival to revive what is happening. The understanding was not clear for the ministers in the Church of England. Because he was doing what he wanted God to do. So he was pushed out. And he said, the whole world is my parish. And you know parish. Parish is a church. And the man's when it comes together, is a parish. The compound of the church is the parish. So he was out of the parish of the church. But he said, even the troop of my daddy is my parish. So he went there and stood up on his father's to, to preach. And he gathered together the people who believed and understood what messages God has given him. And they formed Wesleyan group. And when it began growing, other people saw that these people do their things methodical. When it was 6 o'clock, they would come. 6 o'clock. When it's 3 o'clock, they come 3 o'clock. Anytime they were called, they come together. Are you with me? I'm bringing you the differences between Methodism and Wesleyan. I've told you last time that Wesleyan zeal is beyond Methodism. Okay. Wesleyan zeal 
is beyond what? Methodism. You know what is happening? We are now going back to our fathers. That is Anglican. This is where John Wesley saw that we are deviating from the real scripture to unscripture. Therefore, he called us back. Let me tell you, now the church, when it wanted to become a church like it is, there was no constitution for the Methodists. So they have to borrow from Anglican to make a constitution. And we left on that constitution. Huh? And we saw that we're still going back. And now we've gone back to where, where John did, did, didn't want to go. So now we are bishops and we have presidents and we have lay president and so on and so forth. I'm throwing a question to you. If John will have been here today, what will he say? Bow down your hands for prayer. If John, John pray in life, let God help you to do what he wants you to do. Pray that God, I want to have your image in me. Not a picture they are selling, calling Christ, but a picture in the Bible. The picture in the Bible. Who Jesus is in the Bible. Pray that God. Let me live according to your will. Also pray and ask God. And I want to surrender the total control of my life into the hands of the Holy Spirit. I will not do things as I want to do again. Can you be on your feet for a minute as we pray? Out to him my oh my Savior I surrender I surrender
Open your mouth and pray. Shout unto the Lord and the Holy Ghost. Take absolute control. a minute and I just want you to feel the atmosphere and the presence of the Holy Spirit in wherever you stand Jesus this is the first service in the first month of September you need the Spirit of God to lead you for the whole semester Jesus you need the presence of God to be with you in the whole of the month of September. Jesus. But this time I want you to pray within you and ask God that God take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Jesus. Take my days. Take my movies. Take everything in me. Let them flow in sinners' places. Pray to God and God the month of September. I need your presence. I need your power. I need your anointing. I need some Lord. I need you for this semester. Spirit of God. Breathe the breath of the Holy Spirit. Jesus. Breathe the breath of the Holy Spirit. That this month you can walk in spirit. This semester you will not conform to the images of this world. Yes, Lord. The patterns of this world are passing gone. Jesus. But you confirm to the patterns of Christ. Yes. This semester, you surrender the control of your life into the hands of the Holy Spirit. Jesus. This semester, yes. you will live a continual praying life on this call. Jesus. This semester, this semester, you will see the power. And the blessings of God. The blessings of God. May the Lord protect and guide you. Jesus. May God Himself cover you with His blood. Jesus. May the presence of God lead you in everything you will do in this semester. It is my prayer that this semester will be another glorious semester. It is my prayer that you will not refer to any exams the whole year. It is my prayer that you be the winner 
in every subject. It is my prayer that the shower of blessings of God will be upon you. May he increase it. You anoint him and grant you favor before him and before him. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.